what have you found about how audiences, different audiences respond different, mm -hmm. differently when you do the same exact material? Why do you think that is? Why well, it can be a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons is Friday night is different from Saturday night because they're bringing all the tension of the work week mm -hmm. to a place where you might not know you're pushing a button in there with your jokes or whatever. And they're drinking in the first show. They're usually not so drunk that there's belligerence. Ooh. And sometimes they can be explosively good crowds because they just need to blow off and get a laugh. Mm -hmm. But then the second show, now they're so drunk because they've been drinking through the time frame of the first show with dinner and then way into the show with a two drink minimum. And it just does the angry liver. It makes anger occur and then find its own reasons as it goes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so you'll get people who consciously <laughs> transfer you with the authority of the boss or whatever it is at work. And all kinds of weird things can be triggered that you don't even realize you're doing while you're telling your jokes. Wow. That, that is, is true. Yeah. And and why do people, you think some people get offended about certain jokes and others don't? <laughs> Upbringing. Yeah. And, uh, SAS probably has a lot to do with it, how their parents went to they get scolded for saying something. It and triggers them, right? It triggers something from their childhood. Yeah. And they can pretend it's about something moral. But it's probably had nothing to do with anything moral at all. It isn't about that. It's about them s suddenly feeling like they're not getting their way or it reminds them of the way their father or their mother said something to them. Such a and, great point. And when they're drunk, they lose that barrier to go, okay, but that's, I don't bring that here to the club. Yeah. Um, yeah. And do you think that laughter unites or divides or does both? I think it's like a book. You can write anything in the book. Mm -hmm. You can write good book, bad thing in a book. It just, it's a book. And it's it's a release. It, it, you know, laughter for a comedian is like a food supply. And so the, the assumption is by the time you're here at my show and you're laughing, it doesn't even matter if you think you're laughing at me because I'll just collect it either way. <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. You can, you can interpret it any way you want. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's on the audience a little bit more than on the comedian. It's how they react and interpret. Well, you guys, as comedians, you can feel the energy. Like, I've only done plays. I've never done stand-up, you know, like live in person. But you can feel the energy from the audience, even in a play that's, re you know. So I can imagine you guys doing stand-up where you could feel probably somebody's anger, like what Rick's referring to and the belligerent when you can feel it before even probably they say anything or make noises or anything. Yeah, sometimes you see their arms are folded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. one of those people that would be like a relative who's a jerk who, who resents you subconsciously for doing what they dreamt they could have. Ooh. Instead of you know acknowledging that, they just say, "Okay, he's at dinner." They'll say, "So tell me a joke." Now, any here's the rule for anyone saying that. I don't care who it is. Let's say, "Oh, you're a comedian." Well, tell me a joke. They intend to not laugh at your joke. They are <laughs> sabotaging you. They're trying to nuke you and embarrass you and never, ever, ever give in to them asking you to do it. Absolutely. I always tell them. It doesn't matter what they say. Yeah. They say, well, maybe you're not funny. Go think whatever you want. Yes. You, I know that you, you're going to not laugh no matter what because you're still not fully grown up. <laughs> Absolutely. I always tell them. You're not an adult yet. Yeah. I always tell them, come to the show. Come to one of my shows and, yeah, and yeah. you'll see. Yeah. And and you'll so hear my jokes. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And another. And then, so the joke sometimes people would say, oh, so what do you do? Uh, oh, I'm an account. Here, balance my books. From <laughs> so true. <laughs> exactly. And then another thing that uh, I'm sure, you know, we all get it. Like, are you funny? <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> if I didn't think I was funny. Uh, sure? I, sure, yeah. Again, 
This is not an adult question. <laughs> no, like it's a kid, like a little kid who doesn't know any better asks that kind of question. The mother says, "No, don't gate that to the person." That's you know, that's supposed to be, but now the mothers don't pull the kid aside because they don't know that the kid said anything wrong. <laughs> it's true. Uh -huh. And then another one is, oh, I have, let me tell you a story. You can put it in your act. I'm like, I can't use your story. <laughs> so just so you get to brag to your friends. Oh, I gave a comedian one of the minutes and she used it. I know, I know. And then if you date someone, like, are you going to put me in your comedy? It's like, when we break up, I will under a fake name, but not right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> Never do anything to a comedian that you don't want to see up on screen. Right? Yes. Oh, comedy revenge don't is... Don't make that my fault. Just yeah, <laughs> exactly. Don't, don't never corner me. Mm. Yep. Don't think you got the edge. Just because I'm being nice, don't confuse those two. Right? Very true. Yeah, a lot of people confuse niceness for weakness, and that's um, yeah, yeah. Ooh. That a mistake. Ooh, well, that's a mistake. Wonder, have you guys experienced that where you anonymously, you know, mention or you're telling a story or about an experience, a person, you mention the person anonymously, and then that person finds you or contacts you like, oh, I didn't know you were, and you're like, I never mentioned your name. It's, you know, it's free game. It's my deal. It's my stick. Has anyone? Uh, not a lot, but once, once or twice it's happened. Okay. And, uh, I'm, you know, and, and I, I had to remind them that you have no idea how easy you're getting off. Oh, right, right. I, I, I remember the way you treated me after that. You were getting up so insanely easy. Yes. <laughs> You've used up the last of my dying guy on this. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Totally, totally. I, I remember I once I used to do jokes about dating an older guy because I dated this guy who was like, like a lot, a lot older. So I did all guy jokes, which is not nice, I know, but it, they were funny. <laughs> and so <laughs> his best friend went went there and he was like, I didn't like those jokes. He was offended. I was like, they're funny. Oh. You know, his best friend was offended. Yeah. I know, but it's like maybe because I know it made him feel old, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. His yeah. own insecurity. I know. And they were not really mean. They were real. Actually, it's things that happened. <laughs> I'm sure now there's a young guy making jokes about me being the old uh, sugar mama or something. You know? <laughs> Who do you date different ages and there's an age long gap? Long enough. Now all the jokes go ironically in a big circle. <laughs> you start being the setup and you wind up being the punchline. A hundred percent. And it's okay because you know what? It kind of evens out because I did so many old men jokes that it's okay if they do old lady jokes i'm okay with it there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's you life know? revenge just the universe balancing my life out and that's okay i feel okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm not offended it's all good very good yes so um so what um has comedy been mostly like performing has it mostly been a very positive experience or kind of like more of a, a lot of negative experiences performing comedy? What, what is well, your balance? I'd say, I'd say that the negatives are not so much on stage as getting, getting the jobs or uh, the availability of those kinds of jobs anymore, who they book, how to fill a room. Yeah. That uh, sort of all the nuts and the bolts and the mechanics of it are more the problem, I think. That is true. That, that it's uh, the audience's expectations, what they are burnt out on at this point. Uh, there's a million factors that all go into why you'll see lots of uh, older comics mm -hmm. uh, saying it's just a tougher gig right now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the guys are on boats. A lot of, some of the guys are doing uh, comics are just working senior centers and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. they are now at an age where the seniors look up and see some part of themselves in the atmosphere. Who's this punk kid? <laughs> That's right. You, know, you go to one of the modern clubs and you get the stat, who's this old man? <laughs> that oh is God. so true. 
<laughs> I know it's it's so it's so um, imbalanced, you know, when because yes, it really is because you get really the juicy material when you're older because you've lived life yeah. and you've had experiences. When you're younger, you know, not so much unless you had a rough yeah, life, you, right? It, it doesn't look right. Some kid coming up talks with a guitar singing a blues song about how rough his life has been. <laughs> Yeah, that is so true. Well, there's kids, they play insane. There's a couple of kids who play insanely good blues, and they let him get away with it. But if ever there's a roast on this kid, the, the jokes are all going to be like, how the hell did you know it? You know? Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, so, do you think there's ageism um, in the comedy world as far as booking? Mm. I think there has to be, just because they got to keep their lights on these big rooms you got to fill all those seats and there's, there's no way to do it with an older person hmm. they can't be dishonest about that part they have to say that's that's what this is you know yeah and then we're running a business here and there's only so much we can do about that yeah I don't blame them for that part they're stuck having to fill those seats that is true. Yeah. No, I it, I mean, business is business. You know, it's like you yeah. need they need to uh, pay their overhead and pay the comics. So, yeah, it's yeah. whoever has drawing. How do you think social media and like TikTok has changed the landscape of stand up comedy? Well, I think it's pretty much put a lot of publicists out of business because <laughs> it is the sole yeah. publicity venue that. Mm -hmm has made stars out of, you know, people that would never have been acknowledged as much as they have been if they had to leave it all up to the big machine, the, the, the regular media to take care of them. And the multiple billions they would have had to have spent on a publicist to get there. Yeah. But it sort of, it sort of took away the authority of that other business to a certain degree. Absolutely. That's why you can have a hot to a girl posting stuff, you know. I know. I'm not gonna comment on that, but good good for her. She's making lots of money. Good for her. Good for her. Uh, but it breaks my heart that there's like young people like her that are like doing, you know, just hustling to get comedy gigs and um and then she just did that. I don't know. Was she a plant or something? You know, was she planted? How how did that go viral? What you is know, the I'm appeal? Not blaming her oh no, not at all. Not at all. I'm, I'm just saying this is a it's a marker. Mm -hmm. it's, it shows the water level on how you're sitting in the ocean. You know. Yeah, you're right. You are right. It shows you where you are. It's where you're parked on this floor in the parking lot. You are here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, how do you think the quality of comedy has? Uh, increased or decreased throughout the, the year, especially with the, uh, uh, you know, social media? I think it's gone in every direction at once. <laughs> That's a great answer. Yes. Uh, everywhere all at once, like the movie. Like the uh, movie. Yes. Because it's all these different people that figured out how to log on and show off. And that's, then you'll get humanity. Here they are. The good ones, the bad ones, the sane ones, the crazy ones, the nice ones, the mean ones, the worst. Yeah, I kind and, of... And, and, and there should not be any filter. Right. Yeah. We were putting a filter on this uh, because it's that's insulting. It's like saying you're not smart enough to filter it. Who better do that for you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you mean like TikTok and YouTube? They, they filter <laughs> comments. Well, decide let the market decide ah yeah i agree with that because like you can't say certain words you know you have to say unalive or schmecks yeah. you know unalive. like it's come on man what is that let me guess what's the secret of unalive? i know it's like it means the same thing so what is the yeah. <laughs> it's so weird i was not even aware of that grace had to tell me i was like what yeah Absolutely. You have to say these words or they flag you. Right. Yeah. Yikes. Or if if uh, me as a, like the producer, I 
correct someone, you know, in a nice way. Like, you know, we have to say instead of G U N, we have to say pew pew or unalive or whatever. And so yeah. if if the computer, the AI catches that I corrected it, then it kind of pass it lets it go. Okay. And now doesn't that also feel like they're forcing us to sound like we're talking to kindergartners? Right? Yes. Yeah, or yeah, or talking in code. Yeah. yeah, that is so true. That is no, so true. That's um, YouTube and stuff, but like we were talking about other platforms. I don't know if Rick's checked them out, but I've heard about Rumble and I got on there, you know, and it's like Twitch and all these. I guess there's comics on there that they could, you can say whatever you want on there because it's not um, the same rules, apparently. <laughs> well, that's nice. We should get on Twitch and do like a private party on Twitch. Oh, yeah. Rumble, maybe Rumble. Rumble too. I need to. I I'm not on it. Are you on it, Crystal? I joined, but I haven't done anything yet. Kind of like Twitch. So. Oh my God! I have five yeah. followers on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Remember uh, Vine, that where you had like yes. a second video. Yes. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I I booked a. Uh, when they were still running uh, before they went down, we, we were developing a comedy series uh, oh. for Vine called The Man with the... Hello? The Man with... <laughs> it's called The Man with the... Oh, I was like, oh, did we get disconnected? Because <laughs> they, they cut it off. Oh, I can't. No. Oh, wow. That, I'm making a joke. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know. You know, I was hearing, I was hearing today, <laughs> you were talking about PDD, and it was like, and then the, the case, and the, you know, beep, 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 like, it was like, I had no idea what they said. I had no clue. Wow. everything. Yes. It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Can you not bleep? But if they don't bleep, you know, they lose, they don't monetize. Huh. Right, if you don't get clicks or whatever, and so, but I think sometimes people say that they they're doing it just for clicks, but they're it isn't just for that. It's they want to mold a mindset, and I guess everybody does to a certain degree. Yeah. But I, sometimes you just I wonder if all of their followers are real. I honestly, when it's such a perfect rounded number. You know? Yeah, well, I heard that a lot of celebrities do buy followers. It's kind of easy to do anyway. Yeah, you buy blocks of, of digital non-existent followers. Yeah, yeah, they buy bots. Yeah, I heard that. I prefer to grow organically. I mean, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I don't quality like bots. Over quantity. Absolutely, and you want the engagement of that audience. It's like doing a comedy club. You're going to be in a, an audience of 500 who are not engage with you and you can be in an audience of like 20 people that are engaged with you the 20 people that are engaged with you is way more fun than the 200 who are not engaged with you same thing amen well, they, they've met the bare minimum of they exist mm. exactly you gotta get to be to be in my club, you gotta start by existing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not asking for too much, am I? Wow. For simple I think... for existence. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, I say, he's such a commanding guy, man. That's who the actual <laughs> you I mean be real, like open. No, I just mean like actually <laughs> real, 3D real. <laughs> yes well pretty soon it's not gonna be like real audiences it's gonna be ai you know in the comedy yeah, clubs right. <laughs> they're gonna have ai, AI. <laughs> do you it's think like those uh it'll be canned laughter with faces i know yeah, shoot a comedy special that's what it's gonna be yeah 